a new branch of science, her truth revealed and explained. Both father and daughter will share the human experience of grief and isolation together. Chapter 21 Origins Part 2 Jinhua's heart was pounding, her throat dry, as she let the gravity of her father's story sink in. Me? No way. From Lee's perspective, she looked stunned, jaw hanging in confusion. He eyed her closely, waiting for her reaction. I'm sorry. But, but, I don't feel like a robot. I feel like, like me, Jinhua said. The emotional impact of the news began to hit her like a wave crashing on a crowded beach, devastating all she had ever known about herself within seconds. Lee leaned forward and grasped her hand in an uncharacteristic gesture of physical sincerity. I know, I know. And that's what I've always wanted for you. Not to feel like a science experiment, but as a normal girl, to live a normal life. Jinhua pulled her hand away and sobbed. The tears stung her eyes, blurring her field of vision. But Dad, how can I live a normal life? Nobody knows what I am. Lee fell silent. He knew she was right. Jinhua, the truth is, we're still studying how the digital redundancies within you are functioning with your innate biological systems. So we don't know how the interactions will play out as you grow older. So you've been monitoring me and my growth from here? Me and another team of scientists. Yes. Suddenly, she felt dirty, violated. It was a feeling that was difficult to experience, especially because the man sitting across from her was the primary source of her discomfort. In that moment, the desire to lash out at her father was strong, very strong. She wanted to make him feel as small and unadjusted as she felt. Her hunger, tiredness, and teenage hormone trifecta had merged with another. Anger, confusion, and disappointment. The two triangles coalesced and manifested as a physical choking sensation that left her speechless and lightheaded. Sitting there across from her, the man looked ready to absorb any blows, verbal or physical, she may have wanted to inflict on him. Jinhua had no idea if she would act on the impulse. She concentrated every fiber of her person on maintaining her self-control which felt as if it might tumble and shatter into millions of pieces at any moment on the tile floor between their feet. Several soundless minutes passed between them as father and daughter worked to find the right words to say. Lee's eyes had fallen to the floor, his thoughts floating Heavy physical fatigue befuddled his mind. It was as if he was back in basic training, wading through a freezing river, uniform soaked from head to toe after a week-long training exercise. One foot in front of the other was all he could manage. Jinhua stared at her father. A storm of emotions, questions, Doubts and concerns darkened the sky over a battlefield in her mind. 
The Combatants, Anger versus Curiosity. Both were armed with ancient weapons of war. Cannons, horses, swordsmen, archers. Both sides were anxious to begin the killing, waiting for the other to strike first. She was unsure which side would initiate the hostilities and come out victorious. Lee broke the silence between them. We were monitoring you regularly. Until a few years ago, when you turned 11, he said with a low voice. The troops on the curious side began their assault. A volley of cannon fire. The first line of the vanguard charged. Hundreds of angry side troops were decimated. Curiosity gained some territory. What happened? It seems at the onset of puberty, something happened between your biological systems and their respective redundancies. In a quick explanation, it appeared as if each one became aware of the other and formed some sort of mutually beneficial pact between the two in order to ensure their survival. One of the results of that pact was that we lost access to some internal digital systems, like to the nervous, endocrine, and other systems. Lee fought through an overwhelming sense of guilt to maintain eye contact with his daughter. Her red, glossy eyes wanted to look elsewhere. He could tell. She's She's fighting fighting too. The cavalry on the angry side gathered reinforcements and prepared for a strategic flanking movement. Mounted warriors surged forward, mowing down screaming and scared curiosity soldiers. So, since I turned 11, you haven't been able to know what I was thinking? No, we completely lost access to the data six years ago. In a surprising turn of events, the Curiosity Army tapped into a mid-21st century satellite. A ray of light pierced through the heavens, blasting a giant crater between both armies. The battle was over, at least for now. Jinhua let out a sigh of relief. Thank goodness for that. Li read her reaction. The beginnings of a smile crept into his weary face. I've always considered your privacy when dealing with the team. Some things just should be private. Jinhua reached over and embraced him, squeezing him tightly. You are still looking after me, right? Always. You know I am he said. Jinhua returned to her stool. So my mother... Technically, you were born from a sort of digital surrogate mother, but the original biological egg was provided by one of my old serious colleagues and a pioneer of digigenomics. Her name was Charlotte Thompson. Unfortunately, she died in one of Limnick's building demolition attacks, in 2044. Lemnick. 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 So it was so them. It was them. 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 Jinhua began to sob again. Surrogate? Why didn't she want to raise me? Why weren't you two ever together? Lee answered the questions as calmly as possible. He did not want to upset her further. It takes a very special person's DNA to be able to interact with the software. It would simply be too dangerous for the embryo if the biological and the digital components did not match. Lee sighed, then averted his gaze from her. Your mother had a rare DNA code that was compatible with the digital redundancies. 
So, being the scientist that she was, she donated her life and body to science. He had not answered her questions, but her mind was going in so many directions, she couldn't bring herself to press him again. I had a mother. Limnit killed her. I'm part robot or computer. I can't trust my dad. Jinhua sobbed uncontrollably. For the first time in her life, she felt overwhelmed by information. It was as if a dam had ruptured and flooded the landscape, leaving only guesses as to what was below the muddy brown water. She was helpless against the great force. All she could do was sit on a dry rooftop and wait. Wait for the water to recede. Wait to assess the damage. Wait and hope some things could be salvaged from beneath. Hope things might be like they were before the catastrophe. My life will never be the same. Lee stood and with great care dropped to his knees to wrap her in his arms. It had been many years since he held her to let her cry. He didn't know it, but she cried for him and the mother she never had a chance to know, for Sirius and Limnik, and for herself. When there were no more tears, Lee let her go and returned to his stool. He took the statue-like posture of a debilitated man on a park bench, eyes burning a hole into space between his feet, staring at everything and nothing. Jinhua's arms hung at her side. The vacant expression on her face mirrored the scene in her brain. Earthy, contaminated water everywhere. Evidence of the disaster floated on the surface, gently lapping at the side of a rooftop. No hope of rescue. She sat in a noiseless void, with few coherent or meaningful thoughts coming to mind, unsure how to proceed. Somewhere across the cityscape, her father shared her fate. Alone, water sloshing at his feet and caught in a downpour. He wondered if he should move to a higher place or allow the rising water line to drown him where he stood. They sat together in complete solitude for a long time. Only the humming of the air conditioner marked the passing minutes. Light from the hallway stirred both from their respective inner prisons. Someone had opened the door. It was Daniel. The youth peered into the room with caution. What he saw was the scene he expected. Mr. Ma sitting like an animated sculpture. Jinhua dangling, face full of sadness and hurt like a broken doll. It fit. Everything made sense. He was no longer afraid. He had never been. Jess acted on pure algorithmic intuition. Or was it emotion? No thoughts came to mind. Movement, motion, process. These were the only ways forward. Jinhua had noticed him at the door, but made no acknowledgement of him. His presence was hard to detect among her tangled feelings and emotions. Before she could react, Daniel walked toward her with echoing footsteps. Seconds later, he stood in front of her, face heavy with anguish. 
He was so close, she could feel the gentle warmth radiating from his body. Lee made no movement or protest. Daniel, what are you... Jin Hua asked. In the next instant, he stood her up with steady hands and wrapped his arms around her with the warmest of hugs. It's all right, Jin Hua, he said. It's going to be all right. She stood there in shock, not sure what to think or how to feel. Still numb and reeling from what her father told her, Daniel's hug seemed like another event of the day designed to confound her thinking and undermine her carefully crafted construct of the world as she knew it. Her body remained tense, but Daniel held on, unfazed, solid. After a few seconds, she felt it. The not-quite-attraction-but-something-else feeling. Again, 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 there it is. There it, is. It, 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 it manifested as a nudge, ever so slight, but present. It made her feel safe. Like everything was going to be alright. She closed her eyes to savor the sensation. Felt her muscles begin to soften within his arms as if they were one being, one life, one entity. Daniel, I... She began to speak, but stopped. Something told her to let the moment breathe. To let herself breathe. Standing there in his arms, it was as if some camera were spinning around them both, capturing the scene from all angles. She let it last, long enough to lift her off of that forgotten rooftop. Long enough to reconnect with her thinking brain. She had recovered her senses, and it all, and it all because, because of hugs, hugs from, Daniel? from Daniel? What is what this? Is this? When they separated, Jin Hua noticed Li had vanished from the stool. He had moved behind his massive desk and was searching among the neatly stacked document readers for something. Dad, what are you... Her unanswered questions had been stacked to the ceiling of her headspace. A throbbing headache began to pound on her skull. A single document reader in hand, Lee made his way over and offered it to her. Jinhua, read this. Hopefully it will help you understand a little more about yourself and our young guest here. He looked at Daniel up and down, then squeezed her hand. I'm going downstairs to order some takeout food for you. He began to walk away, then turned. I love you, Jinhua. She looked down at the document reader, to Daniel, then to her father. I love you too, Dad. Lee exited the room, leaving Daniel and Jinhua alone in the study. Several hours later, Jinhua lay on her bed, gaze fixed on the ceiling, showered, belly full of a chipotle burrito bowl, she felt much better, yet completely wired. There's no There's way no I'm way sleeping I'm tonight. Tonight, tonight, too much, too stuff, much to stuff to think about. To think about. It had been an interesting day, and an even more interesting dinner. As Li and Jinhua munched on bowls full of synthetic beef and assorted veggies, they talked until the early hours of the morning. Daniel watched them eat, a pensive look on his face. He didn't eat at all. Nor did he say much all night. Now I know now why, why. why. Jinhua thought. While in the shower, 
partially thanks to Daniel's magic hug, she engaged her systematic thinking to prioritize the importance of her questions related to everything she had discussed with her father. 1. Daniel. 2. Mom. 3. Me. 4. More about digigenomics because it sounds cool. 5. More information about Sirius and Limnix. By the time she changed and made her way up to the dining room, questions about Daniel were on the tip of her tongue. She doubted she would get to answers about her mother tonight, but she prepared several questions anyway, just in case. Back to Daniel. At the top of her list, she wanted answers to, Who is he? Why does he feel so familiar? Why are his hugs so warm and effective at helping me think straight? After the food arrived, Lee ate from a lukewarm steak burrito bowl, while Daniel sat looking at the table. No one spoke. The silence provided the optimal environment for Jinhua to delve into the contents of the document reader she received in the study as she ate. The reader contained a summary document about an experiment Sirius conducted 17 years prior. Within 10 minutes, Jinhua had devoured the 25-page report and the entirety of a chicken burrito bowl with guacamole. A digital twin? She exclaimed. Her father nodded while crunching on a salsa chip. Yes. In summary, his digital redundancies are the same as yours, except he was not born from a biological surrogate as you were. Jinhua looked confused. So we're not related? No, not in the biological sense that you are used to. Phew, I almost thought I was like the Lannisters in that old show Game of Thrones. So how does it work? In addition to conducting research into digigenomics, your grandfather and his associates were also interested in understanding if human consciousness could be manifested into inanimate machines. So, like a talking toaster? Jinhua asked. Lee chuckled. Something like that. This led to speculative experiments back in the 30s and 40s. Around the same time major breakthroughs in digigenomics were occurring. Around the time I was born... Lee nodded, reaching into the brown bag for another chip. Yes, human cyborg technology has existed for decades, but they weren't sentient. This is why several experiments were conducted in this field. He looked at Daniel, then at Jinhua. As you probably guessed, Daniel is a cyborg who has grown from a digital egg. Jinhua had already guessed that. I figured it had to be something like that. But how are we connected? Daniel's digital redundancies mirror yours. So in a sense, you are both like two digital devices on the same network, able to communicate and talk to one another in a variety of different ways. Jinhua felt her pulse racing. Like, what kind of ways? I wish I could tell you. But as in your case, I'm not sure. We are still researching the interplay between digital and biological systems at play in organic humans. The research into the connection between biological humans with digital DNA and cyborgs with biological DNA is still scattered and has not come up with any conclusive theories. Daniel listened to the conversation without speaking, head swiveling. He had not uttered a word since they had left the study. Jinhua looked at him with curiosity. 
a digital twin, me. She allowed herself to ask another one of her dozens of burning questions. Daniel, how did you know to come into the study? He shook his head. I don't know. I guess I just sensed you were having a hard time. Then I went upstairs. Things were beginning to make sense now. At least one mystery will be solved tonight, Jinhua thought. So you uh, feel things, right? Like a human does? Daniel shrugged. I'm not sure if it's feeling or sensing. I just know what I need or want to do. Then I act. So you're like a software artificial intelligence with a physical form? Lee spoke up. He's more than software. His cyborg DNA contains thinking cells that have a biological redundancy. We are only sure that he has the capacity to execute and act on certain drives and executable command lines. We are not sure that this manifests in the kind of consciousness biological humans experience. After his explanation, he noted the look of confusion on his daughter's face. I don't follow. Example, please. Jinhua scolded herself internally for not being able to follow the logic. I must be sleepy. Just like we're not sure if certain animals experience consciousness in the way that we do, it is the same with Daniel. For example, does an animal like a chinchilla experience consciousness? Maybe, Jinhua said. Even if it did, how would it communicate that to you without knowledge of human speech? Lee challenged. Jinhua did not speak. She sat thinking about a talking chinchilla. The ridiculous image made her want to laugh and acted as an effective mnemonic device for her father's explanation. Now she understood, and she would never forget it. Lee gestured toward Daniel, bursting the thought bubble of the talking chinchilla that hovered over Jinhua's head. It's the same with Daniel. If he is experiencing consciousness, only he would be able to describe it to us. Just like we can only know the consciousness of another person through their thoughts and experience alone. Jinhua yawned. She found the discussion stimulating, but felt the cloud of uncertainty about herself descend over the table. Then there was her mother, and everything else she wanted to know about. Her mind wanted to know, but her body was shutting down. She needed to at least attempt to sleep. Daniel noticed the change in her mood and looked languid as a result. Her father looked like a walking zombie who might flop to the floor without the assistance of blunt force trauma to the head. Thanks for the explanation, Dad. But I think I'm going to go to bed. Been a long day. I understand, Lee said. Jinhua pushed her chair out and stood. Daniel knew not to follow her. Before exiting the dining room, Lee asked for her attention. What he had to say had been brief but was as heavy and important as all the other information she had learned about herself and her family throughout that day. It was the choice that kept her awake, lying in her bed, replaying all the events of the day for at least the fifth time. The decision to continue to live her life as she had been up to that point, or to become an active participant in her personal evolution was hard, but it was one that she alone had to make. So she lay there all night, comparing the pros and cons, thinking about her dad, mom, and Daniel, thinking about the future.
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Sirius and Limnick Episodic Audiobook Podcast. If you enjoyed it, please consider sharing and subscribing. And if you have time, don't forget to leave a review on your podcast provider of choice. Are you interested in getting involved with the audiobook? If so, head over to my website, keithhayden.net, to subscribe to my newsletter. In it, you'll receive exclusive opportunities to interact with me directly and ask questions or make comments related to the story. Your questions and comments may be featured on future episodes of the podcast. How cool is that? You can also find me on Twitter at kh underscore author, YouTube on my channel, Keith Hayden dash author, and on LinkedIn. Just search for my name, Keith Hayden. That's all for now. See you in the next episode. Next time, chapter 22, Liliwo Kalani Keahi.